morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Those of you who are familiar with this channel know that one of the things I talk about quite a bit is narcissism. Now, there's nothing new about narcissism. It's been around since the beginning of time, and it's something that is commonly very popular on places like the internet because people have been indoctrinated to feel themselves to, to have been injured by certain a certain type of person. So basically, people misunderstand what narcissism is. They think it's a certain class of people who are, are evil. Maybe they're even uh, possessed by devils that are extremely dangerous and, and harmful. And I'm not saying that such people don't exist, but I'm saying that's not what narcissism is. Narcissism is sin, and it's a particular kind of sin. It's self-idolatry. It's when people worship their own will over God's will. And this is something that is rampant in humanity. It's nothing new, and it's not rare. It manifests in different ways, and it, it can be very tricky to be able to recognize it because people think it's a certain thing. So it's dangerous to think it's a certain thing. When we're dealing with evil, and this is a manifestation of human evil, when people make their own will and their own ideas of God, that brings about evil. And we can see this, obviously, in, in people who are um, characters that, that caused a lot of destruction amongst mankind, such as Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin. But those are not the only narcissists, and if we're looking at it that way, we're going to miss an awful lot and become victims. And so for that reason, I thought to clarify one particular aspect of narcissism that's very hard to see. But as I walk as a Christian, the longer I walk in the Word of God and the more I seek the Lord about these things, the more He reveals to me. And so I thought to share this with you. And it's not because I'm anything special, because I'm not. I'm someone who was a sinner who was saved by Jesus Christ, and I want nothing less for you. And that's the way out of narcissism. It's the way out of narcissistic abuse, is to obey Jesus Christ. And, and the way that we do that is to look into his word and do what it says. So I want to begin by pointing out that the word of God is the King James Version of the Holy Bible, if you speak English. And I recognize that most of us have been born into a system where we don't understand the King James Bible because we've been taught American rather than English. But the English language is what is used in the King James Bible. And when we encounter things that we don't understand, then we need to look them up. Otherwise, people can come along and tell us what the Word of God means using a false translation or using the witchcraft of theology and deceive us. So we want to understand that the Word of God in English is written in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And if we come across something we don't understand, such as a word, we need to look it up. And when we do that, we will very quickly be able to understand this version of the Bible, which is God's Word. In the Holy Bible, there's a, a certain term known as dissimulation. A lot of people don't know what dissimulation means. So I'm going to tell you what it means so that we can all know what we're talking about here in terms of narcissism. A dissembler is a person who professes beliefs and opinions that they do not hold to conceal their real feelings and motives. So I want to just repeat this. A dissembler is someone who pretends to believe something they don't believe. They pretend to have opinions they don't have in order to conceal their real feelings and motives. A dissimulator is a hypocrite or a phony, a pretender, a fake. A charmer, a sweet talker, or a flatterer. Someone who is self-assured and ingratiating. Dissimulation is the concealing of one's thoughts, 
feelings and character. It's pretense. As Christians, we want to be aware that there are always going to be wolves in sheep's clothing until such time as God's kingdom comes and until we go home. We're going to deal with liars and dissimulators and, and uh, deceivers until the day we, we go home as Christians. We want to recognize that this is a reality. We want to be able to understand how to see it, how to, how to recognize when someone is using dissimulation. Now, Jesus said that when we want to recognize a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, we know them by their fruits. And what I would say is that it's very hard when someone is pretending to be something that they're not to recognize it right away, and thereby many of us have been deceived by many, many narcissists, because this is a characteristic of narcissism. The narcissist has a false self that they present to the world to hide what they're really up to, to hide who they really are. And they will approach someone that they want to target as a, um, as a prey, so predator and prey. They will approach someone with things like flattery, with things like mirroring. Now, what, is, what do I mean by mirroring? The, the person who's involving themselves in dissimulation in order to deceive you will pretend to be just like you. They will look at what you're doing and what you're saying and do as you do and say as you say in order to make you feel that this is a trustworthy person. So one way we can see that a wolf in sheep's clothing will operate is to pretend to have certain beliefs that they don't really have. And they ha they're hiding a motive. I want to talk about some of these motives. Sometimes people will approach people who are true Christians, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. And they will pretend to agree with that and with everything the Word of God says in order to gain religious authority. They want to have power in the body of Christ, and so they will pretend to agree with doctrines that are the doctrine of Christ in, in the Holy Bible, when in fact they don't agree with the doctrine of Christ, but they will pretend that they do. Another motive is to have power over people, to, to obtain the praise of men, to get revenge or to revile people who have harmed them spiritually in the past. So one thing that we can see in, in someone who's of that false seed, someone who's pretending, is they might look at a Christian ministry and say, well, that person has a certain amount of followers and that person has a certain amount of, um, of a reputation of being honorable. And so there's this other religious system that they stand against because they should stand against it because it's false. But they stand it against it and they have some authority and power that I don't have. So I'll pretend to agree with everything that they speak, even though I don't, because I want to enlist them in my getting revenge upon people in that particular group that harmed me. So I don't know if I made that clear, but basically it's someone who's motivated by revenge and they don't really want to serve Jesus Christ. What they want is to get revenge on someone that they feel has harmed them. And in particular, they're seeking religious power and religious authority to, to tear someone down rather than to lift them up. And one way we can recognize the fruit of this kind of person this kind of dissim di dissimulation, is that they're not trying to edify people who are in error. They're trying to make them look wrong. They're wanting to rebuke them. They're wanting to chastise them using, using a Christian ministry in order to do so. So that's the fruit. That fruit shows you that spiritually they're not coming from a loving place. The Bible says, let love be 
without dissimulation. And when we're saved in Jesus Christ, we realize that it's only by the grace and mercy of God that we know the truth. And the truth, we don't use it to tear people down. We use it to lift people up. And while many people might feel torn down by the truth, there's an attitude with which we bring the truth to people. So, for example, if someone recognizes that there's no trinity and and they are in dissimulation, so they might want to get revenge on, say, their old church is a Baptist church, and that maybe they were uh, defrauded in some way of a great deal of money, or maybe they have a a, a a spouse that they were married to who was abusive unto them. So they want revenge upon this person. So what they will do is they will try to join up with God's people because God's people know that there is no Trinity. But when they speak the truth of the Trinity to these people that they have a, a, um, a desire to revile and, and get revenge upon, they will not do so in love. They're not doing it in order to possibly save some of those people and bring them into the kingdom. They're doing it for a motive of revenge. So some further uh, motives for dissimulation are covetousness. Sometimes people want money and they want to, for example, they might proclaim themselves to, to be a shepherd of the people and they want people to support them financially. And there's nothing wrong with, with someone who's a pastor, for example, being supported by the flock that he shepherds because it's a full-time job to, to shepherd a flock. And it's very hard to work and, and, and earn an income while doing so. But there are people who will try to exploit uh, a position in order to get money and, and they will pretend to believe things that they don't believe thinking that they can obtain money that way. So covetousness for money. Another reason, another motive people dissimulate is because they want social or emotional support. And I see this um, in ver manifested in various ways. Sometimes people want, maybe they're lonely and, and they want people to, to be there for them in the way that only Jesus Christ can be there for you so, or for me or for anyone. So, for example, they might say that they they profess belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They might even obey it. But what they really want is they want uh, Christians to attend to their needs and take care of them rather than walking with Jesus Christ. So this is emotionally exploitative. And narcissists are always exploitative in some way or another. They're seeking to profit from God's people in, in a way using dissimulation. So they pretend to believe things they don't believe. They tend to, to represent themselves as, as being just like us, but they're imposters. It's the difference between the wheat and the tares. One thing we can see that Jesus said in the parable about the wheat and the tares is that we shouldn't try to pull up the tares because to do so, we might take some of the wheat with them. And the reason why is when someone's in dissimulation, it's very hard to tell if they're just immature or still somewhat deceived, or if in fact they're just pretending. Therefore, we don't try to root them out, but we do want to be aware of dissimulation because without being aware of it, we become vulnerable to it. People who use the brethren to exploit them often do so because they see that the brethren are very loving and very sincere. And so they think that being loving and sincere means being gullible and naive. And, and verily, I, I have been gullible and naive in my life. And it's not, it's not something, it's not something that we know right away. We grow, at, we become mature uh, the longer we walk with the Lord. So Someone who's an imposter who's trying to exploit your love for the brethren will pretend to to be just like you, to believe just as you do. But after a, a period of time, what you will see is that they're not just like you. They want what you have, and they want you to give them what you have, but they're not willing to have a relationship with the Lord themselves. And this is what narcissists do. 
they're envious people. They, they don't want to humble themselves and walk with the Lord. Rather, if they see someone humbling themselves and walking with the Lord, they want to exploit that person, use them, and, and get that person to act as a kind of guru in their life. So we want to be careful not to be exploited as God's people. We do have love and compassion for those who are weak, for those who don't have a full understanding yet. But there's a big difference between someone who is weak or young in the faith and someone who is pretending to be weak and young in the faith in order to get Christians to attend to them emotionally. Another reason um, for the use of dissimulation is that a certain truth might be useful or serve their, their agenda in their own life. Perhaps this could be um, that they recognize that God's people speak against adultery. So they might be in an adulterous union, and they're very unhappy in that. And they want to exit that, and they can look very holy while doing so by claiming that they're doing it because they're obeying God's word. But really what they're doing is they're exploiting people who are Christians because this one particular doctrine serves something that they want. It's got nothing to do with them wanting to obey God. They wanted to get rid of the adulterous union. They came across God's people, perhaps on the internet, and see that God's people speak against adultery. And they saw that opportunistically as something to use to affect something in their life that they wanted. So that's one example, but there are many examples of ways people might see a particular part of the truth of God's words being useful for what they want. And not they're not being obedient. So when someone's looking on the internet for an excuse to divorce their, their adulterous spouse, and, and they see that there is, in fact, a, a very valid biblical reason for stepping away from adultery, they will profess themselves to believe the entire doctrine of Christ in order to obtain some social support and religious validation for doing something that they wanted to do already. And they're professing themselves to believe things they don't believe in order to obtain that. And when it becomes apparent that this is happening is usually once they've gotten what they wanted, they will discard God's people and move on because the way is narrow and few find it because the way is narrow and it's difficult and they don't want to walk the narrow way. And this is true of all dissimulation that, that usually when this occurs, that over time what will manifest is that if they're using it, for example, to make money, that, you know, if they're using Christians to exploit them for money, they will find out very quickly there's very little money involved in people who are speaking the truth of God's word. Or if they're looking for social support or emotional support, they will find that the doctrine of Christ is written in the Holy Bible is very unpopular, and it's not going to to make their social situation any easier, it probably will make it more difficult. If they're looking for emotional support, a true Christian will redirect people very quickly once they see someone being emotionally exploitative. They will quickly redirect that person to the Word of God, to prayer, to their own walk of faith, to their own relationship with Jesus Christ, because that is the loving thing to do. And so what will happen is that people who are exploiting God's people for emotional reasons or for social reasons will tire of that pretty quickly, and they'll get angry and move on, usually. Um, another motive for dissimulation is to ensnare people or to um, tr entrap them by f phony a phony presentation, so phony questions. I want you to go to the Word of God um, to review this particular action here in Matthew 22. And let's begin in verse, I want to begin in verse 15. It says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him 
in his talk. So a dissimulator sometimes is pretending to, to like you or to they tell you that they really appreciate what you're doing or saying, but they're not meaning that. They're just saying that to flatter you, to let, for you to get your guard down. So this is an example of this happening. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they went and they sent out unto him their disciples with a Herodian saying, Master, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. You see the flattery here. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the persons of men. The person of men, pardon me. Tell us, therefore. So they introduce their question with flattery. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? So a hypocrite is another word for a dissembler. Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then he said unto them, Remember therefore unto Caesar, the, render therefore, pardon me, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. So this is how we want to handle a dissembler as Christians We, uh, when they're doing this. So there are many people who will approach you with flattery. And they might say something to you, my sisters, like, you know, I just appreciate so much how you dress modestly and cover your head with a veil. And, you know, that's really, you know, I really just admire that. And, you know, I agree. I, I really think we, we should be doing that. Tell me, tell me, do you really believe that you need to be baptized to be saved? Because it says here in the scripture that we are saved by faith. You see, what will happen is they'll come to you pretending to be just like you, pretending to agree, and they'll give you some flattery along with it, a compliment. And then they will, once you, okay, so when that happens, you think this is a friend. This is someone who loves the truth. And so your guard goes down. And then they, then what they'll do is they will give you the question that's meant to trap you. And we, we can recognize this sometimes after the fact that it's happened unto us. But when someone is dissembling, it kind of bamboozles us because we, we're kind of wide open for it then. And they'll often do it in a very public way, as these um, Herodians did with our Lord Jesus Christ. So another final um, reason that people do these kinds of things is they want a, a, a veneer of holiness. And one thing a narcissist often does is they will associate themselves with a religious system in order to have the cloak of that morality or that religion around them so then they can operate freely. It's a way of, of kind of like being a, a, one of the bunch. So it's a sour grape. It's a bad apple. But if you're in a whole pile of apples or if you're in a whole bunch of grapes, you look kind of like the other grapes. It's very easy to operate undetected. So a dissembler is wearing a mask. All narcissists are wearing a mask. They're pretending to be something they're not. When we are walking in the faith of Jesus Christ. We have to be sober and watchful, knowing knowing that a lot of people don't have our best interest at heart, even though they say they do. They want something. That's basically why a dissembler will come to someone who's a true Christian. They want something. 
They want to appear holy. They want to look right. They want to prove someone else wrong. They want uh, power or fame. They want to be perceived a certain way. They want money. They want emotional support. They want social support. And the reason I'm doing this video is not to encourage you to have a spirit of distrust towards people, but rather to be watchful. Because the more watchful we are, the sooner we will see when this kind of thing is happening. Finally, I want to say that this is not an unforgivable sin. So if someone is a narcissist or they're a dissembler, if they're using deceit or trickery in order to um, become involved with God's people, they might come to see that that's incorrect and repent of it. For example, if someone comes to, to Christians and wants to become a Christian because they see that the God's people are loving and kind, and so they obey the gospel, and then they're speaking to, to people in the body of Christ to try to obtain you know, comfort and emotional support, and they're really not looking into the word of God, and they're really not seeking Jesus Christ. Well, that is certainly not unforgivable. And, and someone who has obeyed the gospel can, can certainly be redirected, and many will be. Just because we come to the knowledge of the truth, perhaps with sometime a bit of the wrong motives, that, that we can still learn as we go. So we don't want to use, for example, to use this video in order to slander people or to condemn people, but rather as ministers of righteousness, we can't help people who are manipulating us. So if someone is doing this kind of thing, they're, they're a liar, they're operating with dishonesty, and they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we don't want to indulge it. And that's why I'm calling it to your attention. Narcissism is not a condition of that someone is a devil or a demon. Narcissism is not a hopeless mental illness. Narcissism is the sin of self-idolatry, and that is a sin that can be repented of. And verily, all people have in them some of this kind of sin. So it might be that we, we like it when people like us a lot. Maybe we're people pleasers. Maybe we really like um, having people tell us that, that we're, they appreciate our, our walk in Jesus Christ. Maybe we like the truth and, and we feel we can start to feel kind of plucky about having been given a re revelation by God of the truth. We start to be a little bit too proud. Maybe, maybe we think that the body of Christ is like the false religion and that it's okay to do things that the false religion does, such as to profit off of God's people to to, um, through covetousness, make merchandise of the people. Maybe we think that it's okay to seek revenge against people that we've harmed. But all of these things are things that we grow out of as we walk with Jesus Christ. If you have this characteristic in you of um, some kind of dissimulation, then that can be repented of. But it does. it's not something you come to me with or to another person about something you go to God with and you say, Father, I think that I've been guilty of this on some degree or the other in this way or that. Father, please help me to overcome this, this sin of my flesh. And he verily will. Any, any narcissist can obey the gospel. Any narcissist can be saved by Jesus Christ and learn to walk in holiness. And we all have things in our flesh that we need to overcome. So when I say these things and I point them out, it's not to condemn you. It's not to bring shame upon you. Rather, it's for your edification so that as you walk with Jesus Christ, you can more and more take on the mind of Christ and be like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ spoke the truth to people. Uh, people who are in dissimulation really on some way, in some way or the other have trouble hearing the truth because they th they're ashamed of themselves. They think badly of themselves. So they think 
they have to pretend to be something that they're not. So when Jesus sees this characteristic in us, he's well able to, to remake us anew from the inside out, but we must humble ourselves before him. The word of God says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he shall exalt you in due time. So that's what a Christian does. That's my counsel unto you, my sisters, and to anyone who is listening to this video. Yes, we want to be wary of wolves and sheep's clothing. We also want to examine ourselves daily to, to see that our own heart is clean before God and, and be looking to ourselves to say, why am I telling people this? Am I telling this people this because I'm mad about something they did to me in the past? Am I pretending to believe things that I don't fully understand in order to obtain support or control or power or fame or money? Because if that is your condition, that can be repented of. And I urge you to do so for the time is short. Jesus Christ is coming soon for a holy bride without spot or blemish. And we as Christians want to cleanse ourselves from all unrighteousness by abiding in God's word. Feel free to email me if you have questions or to comment in the comment section below. And may the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.